Saram dear listeners and welcome to this fresh episode of Radio Sai Bhajan Classroom. We have a bhajan adoring Lord Ganesha for this episode. This is a bhajan which used to be sung in the earlier years in Prashant Nilayam and not sung so often in these times. It's our endeavor to revive such beautiful sweet bhajans that Bhagwan himself heard in the 60s and 70s. This is a four line bhajan. The first line goes like this. ईश्वरीनंदन परति गजानन ईश्वरी नंदन परति गजानन सो बिफोर वी गेट टू लर्न हाउ टू सिंग दिस भजन लेट्स गेट फैमिलियर विद द लिरिक्स ऑफ दिस कंपोजिशन ईश्वरी नंदन परति गजानन प्रणव स्वरूप पाही प्रभो ओंकारेश्वर पशुपति नंदन परतिपुरीश्वर पालय माम नाउ दैट वी आर फेमिलियर विद द लिरिक्स हियर इज हाउ दिस भजन शुड बी संग सो यू विल हियर द लीड सिंगर सिंगिंग वेरी स्लोली विदाउट एनी म्यूजिकल एकॉम्पनीमेंट्स एंड एज यू लिसन प्लीज ट्राई टू फॉलो Please try to sing along so that you also get a feel of how this bhajan flows. This bhajan is being sung in the scale C madhyam or one madhyam for gents and G madhyam or five madhyam for ladies. First let us learn the bhajan slowly. Ishwari nandana परति गजानन ईश्वरी नंदन परति गजानन प्रणव स्वरूपा पाही प्रभो प्रणव स्वरूपा पाही प्रभो प्रणव स्वरूपा पाही प्रभो प्रणव स्वरूपा पाही प्रभो the next line omkareshwar pashupati nandana omkareshwar pashupati nandana omkareshwar पशुपति नंदन ओंकारेश्वर पशुपति नंदन परतिपुरीश्वर पालयमा परतिपुरीश्वर पालयमा द सेकंड टाइम देयर इज अ वेरिएशन परतिपुरीश्वर पालयमा परतिपुरीश्वर पालयमा having learned the bhajan slowly now let us sing together with the talam ishwari nandana parati gajanana ishwari nandana परति गजानन प्रणव स्वरूपा 
पाहि प्रभो प्रणव स्वरूप पाहि प्रभो ओंकारेश्वर पशुपति नंदन ओंकारेश्वर पशुपति नंदन पर्तिपुरीश्वर पालय मर्तिपुरीश्वर पालय मर्तिपुरीश्वर पालय मर्तिपुरीश्वर पालय म ईश्वरी नंदन परति गजानन सो दैट वाज द ट्यून ऑफ दिस ब्यूटीफुल फोर लाइन भजन ऑन लॉर्ड गणेश एंड नाउ लेट्स स्पेंड सम टाइम अंडरस्टैंडिंग द टेक्निकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस भजन व्हाट आर द नोट्स ऑफ दिस भजन व्हिच रागा दिस भजन बिलोंग्स टू एंड अनिरुद्ध इज हियर टू हेल्प अस थ्रू दिस जर्नी वेलकम अनिरुद्ध टू द रागा सेशन of this bhajan tutor episode sir i'm bishu thank you first of all how does it feel reviving this old bhajan on lord ganesha yeah i'm feeling very uh, happy and uh, in fact fortunate to have known this bhajan now that uh, we are uh, reviving many of the old melodies one beauty of this uh, old bhajans are the lyrics are so simple and uh, the more focus was on uh, whether everybody could easily follow the bhajan sing and follow the bhajan so if you see the musical technical complexity of the bhajan or uh, the lyrical complexity of the bhajan or the entire make of the structure of the bhajan would be very simple that uh, from the the first row till the last row whoever is sitting in the session they can easily connect and chant the name of the lord so i think uh, this inspires me so much to uh, sing many of the old bhajans and revive old bhajans and of course the finally the fact that these bhajans are sung in the divine presence so these are blessed bhajans that given as a prasadam that we are enjoying this bliss of learning this bhajan absolutely i mean today when we look at the bhajan ocean the bhajan universe while there are so many new bhajans being composed in various centers by so many uh, devoted souls uh, we have exalted devotees who have sung these bhajans in front of bhagwan and for us it's really a great opportunity to bring back those bhajans which swami physically enjoyed and i think that will definitely be our endeavor in bhajan tutor sessions to uh get those bhajans which were sung by somebody like raja reddy sir this bhajan for example was uh, given to us by girijamma bai s girija bai you know again uh, someone who came to bhagwan in the 60s and she was part of uh, the sundaram bhajan group in its formative stages and uh, in fact she has given us many by compositions which swami used to love and she herself has composed many so this is actually sai sai smaran karo is a beautiful composition of absolutely of girijamma definitely this is what we will endeavor to do in bhajan tutor sessions we'll bring back the old uh, evergreen uh, melodies and also anirudh as uh, you know we keep discussing whenever people compose new bhajans when we listen to all these old melodies the one unifying factor is their simplicity exactly and their amenability for collective singing yes and i think that is what bhagwan always wanted bhajans to be while we can all compose many beautiful bhajans with with its own technical complexities and different flavors it can be like a song it can be like a ghazal but uh, bhajan is sankirtanam and maybe it is good for us to think about these bhajans when we compose new bhajans so that let it be a bhajan which will help people to sing along and join the collective sadhana of nama sankirtana i think that should be the focus and uh, that we again and again see in all of these old compositions and i think that is another reason why we feel so 
uh, inspired and so compelled, uh, in fact, to bring back these melodies. In fact, before even composing new bhajans, I would suggest, in fact, these are the, these are like new bhajans to us now. True. Because it has been sung in the olden days. After that, there is a gap, and now we are reviving it. So there are so many such bhajans. Uh, I think our primary uh, duty or responsibility would be to uh, revive these bhajans. Uh, and we record so that it's there in the database and also we keep singing it often singing it in the mandir in not only in the mandir i would request everybody to sing in their own centers samitis and centers yes. and be- because they are very simple bhajans everybody could sing it absolutely so let's get down to um, knowing a little more about this bhajan so maybe if you can tell us the notes of the bhajan and also the raga you feel it is largely based on Yeah so coming to this bhajan it's a beautiful four liner simple bhajan though we would not want to categorize bhajans based on raga because bhajans are beyond the discussion of and the boundaries of ragas and uh, the technical factors so uh, this would be largely based on bhageshri it's a raga in hindustani classical music the notes are sagamadani uh, da ಸಾನಿದ ಮಪದ ಗ ಮೇ ನೀದ ಸಾರ ಅಂಬ ಮಂದ ಸವದನಿ ಮನೋಹರಿ ಸಾಯಿ ಜಗ ಜನನಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಘುನಂದನ ಜಯ ಜಾನಕಿ ಜೀವನ ರಾಧೆ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಹೇ ಘನ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಭಜನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಭಾಗೇಶ್ರೀ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಯು ಅ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ಲೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಸೀಮ್ಲೆಸ್ಲಿ ಎ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ವೈಬ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಭಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ಸಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಭಜನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಅಬ್ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಭಜನ್ ಭಜನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ in this raga because you know this ganesh bhajan you start in this raga it's like your whole mood brightens up as the bhajan session starts yes i think uh, very rare are the bhajans in bhageshri ganesha bhajans in bhageshri and uh, it's beautiful that we are reviving this bhajan so let's go to the bhajan line by line and uh, practice with the swaras so that we know uh, which note we have to hit on when we sing these lines ಈಶ್ವರೀ ನಂದನ ಪರತಿ ಗಜಾನ ಸಾಸನಿ ನಿಧಮ ಮಪದ ಪಗ ಮರಿ ಸಾಸನಿ ನಿಧಮ ಮಪದ ಪಗ ಮರಿ ಸಣವ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಪಾಹಿ ಪ್ರಭೋ ಗಗ ಮಮದ ನಿದ ದನಿ ಗರಿ ಸಗ ಮಮದ ಧನಿ ದ ಧನಿ ಗರಿ ಸಂಕಾರೇಶ್ವರ ಪಶುಪತಿ ನಂದನ ದನಿ ಸ ಸ ಮಮ ಗಗ ಮರಿ ಸ ಸ ಧನಿ ಸ ಸ ಮಮ ಗಗ ಮರಿ ಸ ಸ ಪರ್ತಿ ಪುರೀಶ್ವರ ಪಾಲಯ ಮಾಸಿ ನಿಧ ಮ ದ ನಿಧ ಸಾ 
दस सानी नी दामा धानी दसा The second time, Parthi Puri Ishwara Palayamam Dasa Sani Nidama Dhani Garisa Dasa Sani Nidama Dhani Garisa Ishwari Nandana Parthi Gajanana It's always so beautiful when you listen uh, to the bhajan along with its swaras it really inspires you to learn the bhajan to its perfection as well as helps all those who want to play the bhajan in their instruments so that they know exactly where the notes of the bhajan lie thank you so much anirudh brother prabhakar and brother shishant thank you brother sairam 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 brother Sairam So with that we are in a sense done with the technicalities of the bhajan the lyrics of the bhajan and now let's focus on where the main focus of our singing should be which is the aspect of bhava how with what feeling should we sing this bhajan and for that it will help us if you understand what every word of this bhajan conveys So let's take line by line let's go understanding the significance of every word as we begin with the first line Ishwari Nandana Parthiga Janana Ishwari Nandana Parthiga Janana Ishwari is the name of Mother Parvati the mother of Lord Ganesha and Lord Subramanya and the divine consort of Lord Shiva Nandana means son Parthi refers to puttaparthi the place which bhagwan chose for his divine advent gajanana is another name of lord ganesha coming from gaja meaning elephant and anana means face worship of lord ganesha has been followed from ancient times in fact in one discourse swami says that ganesha is as ancient as the vedas themselves during the ganesh chaturthi discourse in 1985 swami said There is an astronomical support for the Ganesha festival which is generally celebrated on the 4th day of the bright half of the Bhadrapada month a constellation with the appearance of the elephant head becomes brightly visible on that very night and that's how you find mention of Lord Ganesha even in the Vedas in the most ancient of our scriptures and there is an interesting legend about how Lord Ganesha became the son of Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati once Mother Parvati was preparing to have a bath and she wanted someone to stand as a guard Nandi the divine bull was always with Lord Shiva but Mother Parvati felt that she had no one loyal to her and so she took a little turmeric paste that she had applied on her body and using it she created the image of a boy and breathed life into it Well her loyal son did guard her sincerely but so sincere was he that even when Lord Shiva wanted to enter inside he did not allow him and as the story goes a battle followed between Lord Shiva and his son resulting in Lord Shiva beheading his own son unknowingly and when mother Parvati sees this she is inconsolable and now Lord Brahma suggests that Lord Shiva should replace the boy's head with the head of the first living being that he came across which lay with its head facing north and lord shiva then sends his disciples to fetch such a head and they find a dying elephant sleeping in this manner after the elephant dies they take its head and attach it to the boy's body and bring back the boy to life and now lord shiva makes him the leader of all the celestial armies or ganas and gives him the title ganesha So that is the story of how Lord Ganesha got the face of an elephant but there is a deeper inner meaning in the story it drives home the point that when we are totally loyal to our mother when we listen to the instructions the directions of our mother when we are absolutely obedient to our mother automatically we gain the blessings of this entire cosmos we become invincible we are made the leader of all powers that is how powerful 
it is when our devotion to our mother is paramount in our lives this is another meaning of the word nandana it means to gladden or delight just as lord ganesha was loyal to his mother and caused her immense happiness our beloved bhagwan also if you look at his life taught us this lesson of being an ideal son for mother ishwaramma when the lord came down in a human form just to reiterate how important it is for us to be always mindful of mother's wants and wishes and directions swami tells us how he fulfilled the three selfless desires of his earthly mother by constructing a school by building a hospital by providing free drinking water to all the villagers not only in puttaparthi but the entire district of anantpur and more again just to let us know how for anyone to be an ideal to be virtuous one has to learn how to gladden the heart of their own mother in fact bhagwan goes on to explain that we have five mothers the physical mother deha mata the cow that gives us sustaining milk or go mata the land that grows the crops that feeds us or bhu mata mother earth and our holy motherland desha mata and finally veda mata the heritage of spiritual treasure that reveal the aim and purpose of human life which take us towards self realization so swami always exhorts us to respect all these five mothers so when we think about mother parvati when we sing ishwari nandana let us remember our own physical mothers as well as all these four other mothers and pay our obeisance to them talking about the elephant head of lord ganesha bhagwan also has mentioned many a time how the elephant head symbolizes extraordinary intelligence and intellectual ability the elephant is known for faith for loyalty for devotion swami often would give the example of sai geeta not just sai geeta any elephant is known for these qualities which make them stand apart from all other animals bhagwan also says that lord ganesha's face is always serene and calm and that is how one must lead one's life no matter what were may be the ups and downs in our lives one must have a similar sense of equanimity pervading one's being there's a wonderful incident uh, recalled by brother sai prakash an alumnus of bhagwan's university now working in the media center this happened during bhagwan's visit to the hill station of kodaikanal in may 99 Let us listen to this episode in his own voice. It will tell us how important it is to keep our focus on Lord Ganesha and how it is Lord Ganesha who will reward us in plenty in times to come if our steadfastness is sincere. Yeah, it really was a wonderful day. Actually, it was May 6th. That is the Ishwarama day in the year 1999. And we were fortunate enough to be with Swami on that day. Actually the story started the uh, previous uh, evening that was the 5th of May Swami was seated down and then he was having a session with all the ladies sitting on the other side and the boys sitting in Sai Shruti in Kodaikanal and suddenly there was water coming down the steps from the first floor there was a little bit of panic Swami said don't worry don't worry it'll all be cleared and so they had to bring a lot of room heaters actually what had happened was since there was heavy rain some of the leaves got stuck in one of the pipes and that's how the water came down so there was a little bit of uneasy feeling and swami was concerned about where the boys will sleep because we would sleep right outside swami's room and in the ground floor that whole area had become wet so swami was asking whether the carpet would be dried up before night time and all that and swami had gone into his room retired for the day again came out at night saw whether all the boys are having enough place to sleep in fact he came down and he said let the boys go into the interview room and take rest at night so there was a little bit of going up and down and a little bit of unrest on fifth evening so i was just thinking on sixth morning that is ishwarama day why not offer a small musical offering to bhagwan as he comes out from his room that was on may 6th in my way of thinking i thought that will also help to forget this unpleasant experience of that water coming down the steps and all that 
एनीवेज वी वर जस्ट हैप्पी डूइंग इट वी थॉट लेट अस ऑफर इट टू भगवान सम ऑफ द एल्डर्स हु आर देयर एट दैट टाइम दे सेड सी यू डोंट ट्राई टू पुश इट एंड ऑल दैट बिकॉज वी डोंट नो इन व्हाट मूड स्वामी कम्स आउट बिकॉज प्रीवियस नाइट देयर वाज अ लॉट ऑफ अनइजी फीलिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वाटर सो आई सेड वी आर जस्ट रेडी सर इफ स्वामी गिस गो अहेड वी विल प्ले आई वाज सिटिंग विद द सितार एंड माय ब्रदर वाज सिटिंग विद तबला and that is ishwarama day as we all know and it's a very busy day as swami came out from his room he saw us sitting with the instruments and he was so happy he spontaneously swami said sitar te chava <laughs> he was very happy he said you have brought a sitar ha ah, play play come on play we were extremely happy and i thought the first uh, song i should play was ishwarama priyatanaya because that is in rag ahir bhairav and that is a morning raga so i thought that would be a nice offering on ishrama day and so i started playing that somebody gave swami the talam and swami was playing the talam as as playing the sitar it was going very nicely and uh, i had prepared one or two songs then suddenly swami looked at me and he said hey play rag hamsadvani hamsadvani why you swami said there was one light instrumental piece which i had heard in rag hamsadvani and i started playing that swami said chi not that प्ले वातापी गणपतिम सो आई सेट स्वामी आई रियली डोंट नो दिस इज अ हिंदुस्तानी इंस्ट्रूमेंट सितार एंड वातापी गणपतिम आई एम नॉट फेमिलियर स्वामी आई हैव नॉट लर्न इट देन स्वामी सेट व्हाट इज देयर यू प्ले एंड देन ही स्टार्टेड सिंगिंग सो एज ही सैंग लाइन बाय लाइन वातापी गणपतिम बजे सो आई वुड प्ले दैट लाइन आई वुड जस्ट फॉलो हिम ऑन द सितार he was with the talam he was just giving the beat and he was singing and i was just following in fact he sang even the first paragraph till about first paragraph swami came and i was just following line by line and swami was very happy and he said see since you played ganesha's song i will give you this ganesha <laughs> and he just waved his hand and materialized this beautiful chain the surprising part was it has a small bead along with it at the base uh, there is the pendant of lord ganesha and there is a small bead till date i have never understood what's the meaning of that bead but uh, something interesting happened uh, many years later one morning must be 2005 or 2006 when i woke up i never removed this chain but when i woke up that bead had come out it had got detached from the locket and i had told my parents keep it very safe see we can get it fixed with a goldsmith just keep it safe after a few days i wanted to get it fixed again we went and saw that bead was missing <laughs> and there was a lot of searching that was done at home and we saw all the places under the clothes in the cupboard in the safe in the purse i remember very clearly my father putting it in a piece of paper folding it and putting it in his purse so i said no no i remember you doing that you see in that it was not there so we were just wondering where it has gone in fact i just prayed to swami and left it nearly 4 to 5 years later this happened in 2004 i was having this chain for 4 years after that till 2008 without the bead and i had just totally given up on that because i thought the purpose of that bead is over but suddenly one day my mother calls me and she says come quickly home i have something to tell you so i went she said this morning i got a strong urge to do kumkum abhishekam in that kumkum which was from the dashra kumkum dashra they do kumkum archana in mandir and they give that kumkum as prasad in that box when she took the kumkum out this bead was found inside wow <laughs> so <laughs> this after a gap of 4 years and uh, there's no way somebody would have gone and put it in that then you know when i really tried to reconnect from those years 2004 sitar practice and playing had really come down because of so many commitments in the office and all that and once more boys joined the office i got chance to go back to playing sitar <laughs> and practicing sitar swami gave back that bead so that uh, bead was sort of uh, another welcoming sign for you I'd, to get back to sitar i i, I just think uh, that that's the only correlation i can find it mm. may be absolutely wrong interpretation yeah. but that's just the correlation i found yeah. between the bead getting lost and my stopping sitar practice and then starting it back but this is the wonderful story of how swami blessed me with this just want to add one small thing in 99 swami had told to play vatapi ganapatim 
this is very moving because when you connect the dots you see how swami is blessing each one when i had come back to parthi the great musician mandalin shrinivas i was just sharing with him that swami wanted me to learn this carnatic and he on a cassette recorded vatapi ganapatham in very slow tempo and sent it to me wow so, so i had i him. had heard that and he had actually recorded two three krithis in a very slow tempo possibly the slowest he has ever played on his mandolin so i actually heard that and picked up those two three krithis so i just knew it in a way of completing the whole story in 2010 when swami took us to delhi and shimla in shimla that was the last day and then swami is sitting and we all boys are sitting and just a thought came in my mind i said swami wow this is fantastic you brought us a telling music group and because swami had specially told uh, sitar boy and all that we had practiced for music program and all but the program was so tight that we didn't get a slot to actually perform so i was just sitting there different time and i was thinking swami we all came and tomorrow we are leaving back and uh, we are going to go back without an opportunity to perform for you just the thought came immediately swami called a kavi kumar kavi kumar is actually yes. shrinivas lu sir yes because his father's name is uh, so swami called him and swami said now after this tiffin session our boys will sing actually there was no slot for schedule program, program. Yeah. there was no schedule program because swami was to come here to few bhajans then there was an auditorium inauguration balvikas program and all that so swami just called him and now after this tiffin our boys should sing and tell that veena boy to play wow <laughs> he said swami sitar ah tell him to play and they sang vata api ganapati wow <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you know after, after 10 years after 10 years after 10 years so he had put a challenge 99 yes that you should learn vata api ganapati he heard it again gave you the blessing he gave me the blessing and again yes. he heard it in 2010 wonderful so circle completes there so now if we take this entire line nishwari nandana parthi gajanana we hail lord ganesha who is the beloved son of mother ishwari and he is the same lord the lord of puttaparthi our beloved bhagwan let's move to the next line pranav swarupa pahi prabho Pranava Swarupa Pahi Prabhu Pranava refers to Om which is the primordial sound the sound from which all creation emerged Swarupa means form Pahi is protect Prabhu means lord Lord Ganesha is verily the form of the primordial sound Om In fact if we draw the symbol Om in a proper way we can easily see the form of Lord Ganesha in it There is an interesting incident shared by brother Ravi Teja again an alumnus of bhagwan's university who had the blessed opportunity of playing flute in the prashanti mandir bhajan group when he was a student and even now continues to play in the prashanti nilayam mandir once when it was time for bhajans to start bhagwan was standing at the entrance of the bhajan hall and all the boys sincerely shut their eyes to sing omkaram in the customary way three times and while this was being done bhagwan slowly bent over to brother ravi teja's ear and softly whispered something which was so profound swami said here is the very embodiment of omkara standing in front of you and what are you doing you are shutting off your eyes on me and chanting omkaram when the very embodiment of the original sound of creation is there right in front of you don't miss that moment that is what bhagwan was trying to convey in fact swami during his birthday discourse in 1966 said om is the sound of the movement of the stars in the firmament it is the sound that manifested when the dawn of creative will stirred the nirakara or the attributeless into activity as a matter of fact every little disturbance of equilibrium in creation produces sound the meeting of the eyelids when the eye winks results in sound it may be very faint but there is sound there are infinitesimally faint sounds which no ear can hear so you can understand that when the elements originated and creation started this sound om was produced 
and that's why it is called as the primeval one in fact in the 70s and 80s while giving darshan to the devotees in prashantinilayam bhagwan blessed many young babies by initiating them into the alphabet so he would draw with his own hand the mystical symbol om on a slate for them so what is the speciality of the om that bhagwan drew on the slate bhagwan says the pranava was taught to every child as the very first sound when it was initiated into the alphabet we call letters as akshara the unchanging om is the symbol of the unchanging eternal universal supreme god and that was the very first letter taught to the children of india since ancient times and the unique thing about the om is when it is pronounced the lips the tongue the cheeks the jaw none of these organs are in action the om always emerges from the navel and without interference or support of any of these organs of the mouth it comes out as one indestructible imperishable sound and that is why om alone swami says can be regarded as aksharam though in indian languages every alphabet is called aksharam but swami says only om qualifies to be called as aksharam so the glory of the sound om the symbol om is as mystical and deep as the birth of creation itself and no wonder it is always associated with lord ganesha so in this line pranava swarupa pahi prabho we call out to lord ganesha hailing him as the very embodiment of that primordial sound om and we beseech him to protect us at all levels worldly and spiritual let's move on to the third line ओंकारेश्वर पशुपति नंदन ओंकारेश्वर पशुपति नंदन अगेन यू हैव रेफरेंस टू ओम मे बी इट इज पर्टिनेंट हियर टू नरेट व्हाट मिसेस रानी सुब्रमण्यम ए डिवाउट एंड डेडिकेटेड डिवोटी फॉर नियरली 60 इयर्स ओरिजिनली हेलिंग फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु who came to bhagwan as early as 1950 what she narrates about how the omkaram chanting started in prashantinilayam she says that a few years after bhagwan started residing in prashantinilayam mandir he introduced the practice of chanting om at the ashram swami announced that all the devotees should assemble in the bhajan hall and they would be taught the correct method of chanting so that is how the omkaram session started in those days early morning at 3:30 am in the brahma murtam and a few days after the practice began swami would come to her room her younger sister was allotted a cottage and swami would enter the room and swami would ask both of them to sit on the floor swami himself would squat on the floor and swami would himself teach them how to chant the omkara he would tell them the power of omkara how it purifies the antakarana how it purifies our manas our buddhi our chitta our ahankara all the internal organs how it cleanses our koshas how it ensures that annamaya pranamaya manomaya vigyanamaya anandamaya all these different sheets that cover the individual soul can be purified through the chanting of om swami would tell them that om kara will take you closer to your own divine self so when devotees chanted early in the morning swami would be sitting there to see if they are chanting it the way it has to be chanted and bhagwan did this for months together in fact even when bhagwan traveled out of prashantinilayam he would write letters to the devotees and swami would constantly inquire if they are chanting and if they are continuing this practice of getting up early in the morning and chanting omkaram 21 times and the practice that swami started way back in the 50s continues even till this day in the prashantinilayam mandir so that's about omkareshwara coming to pashupati nandana pashupati is another name of lord shiva pashu means animal pati means master so pashupati refers to the one who is the lord of all animals or the inner meaning being the master of all animal tendencies within us we know the famous story of how mother parvati and lord shiva wanted to test their two sons ganesha and subramanya and how they told them to go around the world and come back 
Ganesha did not stir from his place, but Subramanya mounted his peacock and set out. And with a lot of effort, he completed completed the trip. When he was coming back, Ganesha saw him from a distance and instantly went around his parents and claimed himself to be the winner. And when Mother Parvati asks Ganesha to justify his claim, he says, "Oh, Mother, the cosmos is a combination of matter and energy." the unity of father and mother when i go around you i have gone around the world itself since you are the parents of the cosmos there is no place where you two are not present i see your omnipresence everywhere so by circumambulating both of you i can claim to have gone around the cosmos it is this intelligence of lord ganesha which is hailed in our scriptures Lord Ganesha is the one who demonstrated this spiritual intellect and thereby taught an eternal lesson to humanity to revere one's parents to know that our divine parents are Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati and they pervade every speck of this creation in fact if our focus is always on the creator on our divine parents automatically our intellect will be sharp we will be able to take timely decisions intelligent decisions we will be able to think quick and act smart so in this line omkareshwara pashupati nandana we again hail the darling son of lord shiva the one who is the very form of sound om the one with whose grace we can be blessed with the strength to master our shortcomings and weaknesses let's now come to the last line parti purishwara palaya mam parti purishwara palaya mam parti puri referring to the land of putaparti ishwara as we saw earlier means the lord palaya means to protect mam means me thus when we say palaya mam we are calling out to the lord to protect us we are calling out to bhagwan the one who is the lord of putaparthi to safeguard us very interestingly as soon as you enter prashant nilayam whether through the east gate or the north gate you will always find lord ganesha welcoming you and it is as if lord shiva's son is there at the entrance of the abode of lord shiva shakti in prashant nilayam to welcome you to cleanse you to set you in the right frame of mind so that you absorb what prashant nilayam has to offer to you every day one would find so many people circumambulating around the temple of lord ganesha and any number of stories of devotees vouch safe the fact that any sincere prayer to lord ganesha never goes unanswered and that is the reason why you will never find ever the ganesha temple in prashant nilayam to be free there are always devotees offering prayers always devotees receiving grace of lord ganesha which bhagwan himself has installed way back in the early 70s so in this line we are offering our prayers to bhagwan and seeking his grace seeking his protection that's what parti purishwara palaya mam means so with that we have spent some time trying to understand what each word of this bhajan conveys and how we can use this bhajan to offer our prayers to lord ganesha to offer our love to bhagwan to seek the protection and the blessings of bhagwan as we begin our bhajan session singing this bhajan let us offer our adoration to lord ganesha and seek his refuge and ensure that our bhajan session and our entire life sails without any obstacles and now in the last part of this bhajan classroom let's listen to the prashanti mandir version of this bhajan ishwari nandana परति गजानन ईश्वरी नंदन परति गजानन ईश्वरी 
So that brings us to the end of this episode of Bhajan Classroom. We do hope it was of benefit to you. It will be our endeavor to continue this series and offer you more bhajans, bhajans which are sung now, bhajans which used to be sung in the earlier era. You are welcome to send us suggestions about the bhajans you would like us to have in this program. Let us make all our bhajan sessions into sessions of spiritual upliftment. Thank you so much. Sairam.